Hi there, I am back with another creature from folklore and next on my list of creatures is the werewolf. So that's what we're diving into today, but we won't be talking about this one, the one you see on screen. I want to give you a summary that's free of the movie version you may have seen elsewhere and instead give you the folklore. If you stick with me till the end, I'll show you the sketch I made last night for my Creatures from Folklore series of paintings. And if you enjoy mythology and folklore, subscribe, because I have a lot more coming later. Feel free to suggest creatures that you've heard of and you want to know more about. Various versions of a werewolf exist in many different countries. But they're thought to come from either Europe or the Indo-European peoples. According to some legends, there are people who morph into vicious, powerful wolves. Others are a mutant combination of human and wolf, but all are bloodthirsty beasts who cannot control their lust for killing people and animals. Although in some stories they only go after women. Primarily women who've had sex before marriage or pregnant women, depending on the source. It's unclear exactly when and where the werewolf legend started. Some believe the debut was in the Epic of Gilgamesh, where Gilgamesh rejected a potential lover because she had turned her previous mate into a wolf. The oldest stories are several thousand years old. That's something they do agree on. Werewolves made another early appearance in Greek mythology with the legend of Lycon. According to the legend, Lycon, the son of Pelasgus, angered the god Zeus when he served him a meal made from the remains of a sacrificed boy. As punishment, the enraged Zeus turned Lycon and his sons into wolves. Werewolves also emerged in early Nordic folklore. The saga of Volsungs tells the story of a father and son who discovered wolf pelts that had the power to turn people into wolves for 10 days. The father-son duo wore the pelts, transformed into wolves, and went on a killing rampage in the forest. Their rampage ended when the father attacked son, causing a lethal wound. The son only survived because a kind raven gave the father a leaf with healing powers. It really took off during the Middle Ages, and that's when the association with the full moon started to appear. So what did a werewolf look like? The traditional werewolf from folklore looked quite different from the movie version. In movies and modern art and other media, the werewolf is usually described as a creature that stands on two legs, very muscular, partially covered in thick fur, sometimes the same color as the hair of its human form, fierce looking with a snarl, they often have human feet and hands with claws instead of nails, and covered in fur. They walk hunched over, but can still run as fast as a wolf. If you hear any strange noises, it's been raining like crazy for over a week. Just thought I'd say that. Let's continue. In folklore, the werewolf's appearance varies a bit by what country you're in. They often look like a large wolf, sometimes on four legs, sometimes on three, some also say two. The reason for being on three legs would be that they were ashamed of not having a tail like a real wolf, so they extended one back leg so it would look like a tail. Other stories describe them as large dogs, sometimes dark, sometimes golden, some say it retained its human eyes and voice while in their canine form. So how did you become one? There was a belief in some European countries like France, Italy and Germany that said that if you slept outside on certain Wednesday or Friday nights during summer under the light of the full moon you would turn into a wolf. Other stories tell of people who voluntarily became wolves either through magic, like people whose mother had crawled through the amniotic sac of a newborn foal to give herself a swift and easy delivery. This would result in the child becoming a mare if it was a girl, 
or a werewolf if it was a boy. In northern Sweden, and also in continental tradition, you took the initiative yourself to be transformed. All that was needed was a belt made of a strip of back skin from a person who had been hanged or executed by other means. By crawling through the belt or snapping it around your waist, you'd be transformed into a werewolf or man-bear. Before the end of the 1800s, the Greeks believed that the corpses of werewolves, if not destroyed, would return to life in the form of wolves or hyenas that prowled battlefields drinking the blood of dying soldiers. In Hungarian folklore, the werewolves used to live in the region of Transdanubia and it was thought that the ability to change into a wolf was obtained as an infant after abuse by the parents or by a curse. At the age of seven, the boy or the girl leaves the house and goes hunting by night and can change into person or wolf whatever he or she wants. The curse can also be obtained when in adulthood the person passed three times through an arch made of a birch with the help of a wild rose's spine. In some rural areas of Germany, Poland and northern France it was once believed that people who died in mortal sin came back to life as blood-drinking wolves. These undead werewolves would return to their human corpse form at daylight. They were dealt with by decapitation with a spade and exorcism by a priest. The head would then be thrown into a stream where the weight of its sins was thought to weigh it down. Sometimes the same methods used to dispose of ordinary vampires would be used. You could also become a werewolf if you had insulted a witch and she put a curse on you. Others claim people became wolves after being scratched or bit by a werewolf. So how do you stop being a werewolf? In some sources it states that the curse can be broken if someone who meets the werewolf shouts its Christian name three times. Another way is if he managed to tear the unborn child out of a woman's womb and eat its heart or drink its blood. There are stories of men who have tried this on their own wives in legends of werewolves. The ancient Greeks and Romans believed in the power of exhaustion for curing people. In medieval Europe there were medicinal cures, usually using wolf's bane, which is a plant, surgical cures or exorcism. A Sicilian belief of Arabic, or Arabic origin states that a werewolf can be cured by striking it on the forehead or scalp with a knife. Good luck getting that close. The transformation usually took place at midnight and during the full moon. The worst affected were werewolves every night, some would change once a week and others only on Christmas Eve. The werewolf belief led to some persecution. It was believed that werewolves in their human form had features and traits that could give them away. Some examples are a unibrow, ears set lower on the head, curved fingernails, a tuft of hair between shoulder blades, hair under the tongue, or a long, relaxed or galloping way of walking. So hairy men were generally in trouble. One method of identifying a werewolf in its human form was to cut the flesh of the accused under the pretense that fur would be seen within the wound. Medical conditions that may have encouraged werewolf mania are lycanthropy, food poisoning, hypertrichosis, which is a rare genetic disorder causing excessive hair growth and other changes in relation to what's called normal features, rabies, and hallucinations possibly caused by hallucinogenic herbs. This, as well as other things, did cause a lot of people to be subjected to torturous and even deadly cures like the plant wolfsbane, surgery, exorcism, and many were also burned. Oh, and there was no mention of a silver bullet in the original sources, only in books and movies as far as I can tell. 
In France, during the 16th century, many people were accused of being werewolves. After World War II, there was a relapse of werewolf fear in northwestern Germany. And as late as 1972, there was an outbreak of werewolf hysteria in Trelleborg in Sweden that also spread to Jakobsberg outside of Stockholm, the Swedish capital. It can perhaps be compared to today's clown horror that spreads in some countries, although it's a lot easier to dress up as a clown than to act as a werewolf. The suspected werewolves were subjected to cruel torture before admitting the absurd charges and often naming other werewolves hoping to get a milder punishment themselves. The new suspects were also tortured until they confessed and named even more werewolves. Which trials anyone? In this way, pure werewolf epidemics could develop. For example, 10 people were executed in the Jura area in 1597-98, and in southern Germany 15 were convicted and burned in 1629 to 1630. It was not until 1720 that the last German werewolf process took place against a beggar named Simon Wand. But some suspects confessed quickly that they made a deal with the devil or were possessed by evil. In all likelihood, these were real killers, with many victims on their conscience, but in court they could only explain their wrongdoings in Christian conceptions. In order to commit such heinous crimes, they had to be possessed by evil. In other words, they saw themselves as werewolves. Here's an example. One of the known werewolves was Gilles Garnier, known as the Hermit of Dol. Gilles was a shy loner who avoided contact with other people. He was lean and pale with a tangled full beard and bushy eyebrows that met over the nose. Ever since the first child disappeared in the Dol area, residents had suspected Gilles Garnier, but they had no evidence, not until three farmers saw him flee from a slain girl in the woods. In mid-November 1573, another child, a ten-year-old boy, disappeared. Several days later he was found dead in a field. One of the boy's legs was torn off, and someone or something had gnawed on his thigh. Gilles Garnier was arrested and taken to the magistrate. The court records of the case were preserved and has the following to say. It is proven that a few days after Michaelmas, Gilles Garnier attacked a girl of 10 to 12 years old at a winery in Châtenois, about half a mile from Dole. Garnier was in wolf form when he did this. He killed the girl with his own hands, which looked like paws and with his teeth, and then dragged her into the Serre forest. Here he undressed her and greedily ate the meat on her thighs and arms. He brought some of the meat home to his wife, Apolline, who he lived with in Saint Bonnet near Amange. The document continues to list Garnier's wrongdoings. In all, he was accused of killing and mutilating four children, during the fall of 1573. Garnier confessed to all these crimes, explaining that the reason was hunger. He had made a deal with the demon. The demon gave him a magic ointment that could turn him into a wolf. That way he was able to catch people and animals when hunger came over him. The confession could also be caused by delusions, caused by a mental disorder. Today, psychiatrists know that patients with clinical lycanthropy really believe they can turn into a wolf. Studies of patients with this diagnosis have shown abnormalities in the parts of the brain that control the perception of the body's shape and size. They not only believe that they can change their appearance, they can physically notice the change. There's a lot more on the werewolf on the internet, in books and movies, but it can be hard to get past the version created to sell to the core of the folklore. I hope I've given you a good summary here. Here's the sketch I made for my creatures of the folklore, my version of a werewolf, and uh, have a great week, and I'll be back with something else next time. Bye bye.